which you must dote on in extremity. Here comes my messenger. How now, mad spirit? What might rule now about this haunted grove? My mistress with a monster is in love. <laughs> Near to her close and consecrated bower, while she was in her dull and sleeping hour, a crew of patches, rude mechanicals that work for bread upon Athenian stalls, were met together to rehearse a play intended for great Theseus' nuptial day. The shallowest thick skin of that barren sort, who Pyramus presented in their sport, forsook his scene and entered in a break, when I for him this advantage take. An ass's knoll I fix it on his head. Anon his thisbe must be answered, and forth my mimic comes. When they him spy, as wild geese in the creeping fowler eye, or russet-painted chucks, many in sort, rising and cawing at the gun's report, sever themselves and madly sweep the sky, so at his sight, away his fellows fly. And at our stamp, here o'er and o'er one falls, he murder, cries, and help from Athens calls. Their sense thus weak, lost with their fears thus strong, made senseless things begin to do them wrong. For briars and thorns at their apparel snatch, some sleeves, some hats from yields as all things catch. I led them on in this distracted fear and left sweet Pyramus translated there. When in that moment, and so it came to pass, Titania waked and straightway loved an ass. <laughs> this falls out better than I could devise. But, but, hast thou yet latched the Athenian's eyes as I bid thee do? I took him sleeping, that was finished too. And the Athenian woman by his side, or when he waked, a force she must be eyed. Stay close, this is the Athenian. This is the woman, but not this the man. Why rebuke you him that loves you so? Lay breath so bitter on your bitter foe. Oh, now I but chide, but I should use thee worse. For thou, I fear, hast given me cause to curse. If thou hast slain Lysander in his sleep, being overshoes in blood, plunge in the deep and kill me too. The sun was not so true unto the day as he to me. Would he have stolen away from sleeping Hermion? I'll believe as soon as this whole earth may be bored, and the moon may through the centre creep, and so displease her brother's noontide with the Antipodes. It cannot be but thou hast killed him. And so should a murderer look, so dead, so grim. So should the murdered look, and so should I. Pierce through the heart with your stern cruelty. Forget you, the murderer, look as bright, as clear, as yonder Venus in her glimmering sphere. Oh, where's my Lysander, good Demetrius, wilt thou give him me? I'd rather give his carcass to my hounds. Out, dog! Out, cur! Thou drivest me past the bounds of a maiden's patience. Hast thou slain him, then? Henceforth, be never numbered among men. Oh, once, tell true, tell me true, even for my sake. Didst thou look upon him, being awake, and hast thou killed him sleeping? Oh, brave touch. Could not a worm or an adder do so much? An adder did it, for a double tongue than thine, thou serpent, never adder stung. You spend your passions on a misprized mood. I am not guilty of Lysander's blood, nor is he dead, for aught I can tell. I pray thee. Tell me he is well. And if I could, what, what would I get there for? A privilege? <laughs> Never to see me more, and from thy hated presence part I so seek. Oh, see me no more, whether he be dead or no. <laughs> There's no following her in this fierce vein. Here, therefore, for a while, I will remain. And so sorrow's heaviness doth heavier grow, and for death that bankrupt sleep doth sorrow owe, which in some slight measure it will pay. And if for his tender heel, oh, that makes him say. What? <laughs> what hast thou done? Thou hast mistaken quite, and 
and laid the love juice on some true love site. Of thy misprision must perforce ensue some true love turned and not false turned true. Then fate overrules one man holding troth, a million fail confounding oath on oath. About the wood go, swifter than the wind, and Helena of Athens, look thou find. Oh, fancy sick she is, and pale of cheer, but sighs of love that cost the fresh blood dear. By some illusion, see thou bring her here, I'll charm his eyes against she do appear. I go, I go, look how I go. No, swifter than an arrow from the Tartar's bow. Flower of this purple dye, hit with Cupid's archery, sink in apple of his eye. When his love he doth espy, let her shine as gloriously as Venus of the sky. When thou wakest, if she be by, beg of her for remedy. Captain of our fairy band, Helena is here at hand, and the youth, mistook by me, pleading for a lover's fee. Shall we their fond pageant see? Lord, what fools these mortals be! Stand aside, the noise they make will cause Demetrius to awake. Then we'll two at once woo one, that must needs be sport alone, and these things do best please me that befall preposterously. Why do you think that I should woo and scorn? Scorning, scorning to Richard. Never look into his look. When I vow, I win. And vow so born in the nativity, all truth appears. How can these things in me seem scorn to you, bearing the badge of faith to prove them true? You do advance your cunning more and more when truth kills truth, oh devilish holy fray. You spell to Hermia's. Would you give her over? Weigh oath with oath, and you will nothing weigh. Your vows to her and me put in two scales will even weigh as light as tales. I had no judgment when to her I swore. Oh, in my mind now that you give her over. Demetrius loves her, and he loves not you. Shall I compare thine eye? Crystal is muddy. Oh, how ripe can show. Thy lips, those kissing cherries, tempting grow. That pure congealed white high Taurus snow, thorn from the eastern wind and turned to a foe. When thou holdest up thy hand, oh, let me kiss this princess of pure white. This yellow. Oh, fine. Oh, hell, I think you two are set to set against me for your merriment. If you were single and new courtesy, you would not do me this much injury. Can you not hate me as I know you do, but must join in souls to mock me too, to vow and swear and praise my part? When I am sure you hate me with all your hearts. You are both rivals and love Hermia. The numbers rivals to mock Helena, a trim exploit, a manly enterprise to conjure up tears in a poor maid's eyes. Your derision, not a foreign sword to offend. A virgin, and extort a poor soul's patience all to make you sport. You, you are unkind, Demetrius. Not so. <laughs> but you love Hermia, and this you know I know. And here, with all good will, with all my heart, in Hermia's love, I yield you up my part. And yours, Helena, to me, the queen, whom I do love and will do till my death. But never did mockers waste more out of breath. My sense are cute by Hermia. I will none. If her I loved her, all that love is gone. My heart to her, but as guess twice sojourn. And now to Helena is it her return. There to remain. Helen, it is not so. Tis oh. marriage, not the fate thou dost not know. Less to thy peril, thou abide, dear. Look. Where thy love comes, yonder is thy dear. Oh, <laughs> my Sander! Oh, dark night! That from all his function takes the immortal quick of apprehension. 
and makes wherein it doth impair the seeing sense it pays the hearing. Double recompense, thou art not by mine eye, O oh, Lysander found. Mine ear, I thank it, brought me to thy sound. Oh, kindly did thou leave me so. Why should he stay? Whom love doth press to go? <laughs> what love could press Lysander from my side? Lysander, yeah. thou would not let him by. Fair Helena, who were in guilt tonight, put you fiery o's and eyes of light. Why seek'st thou me? <laughs> Could not this make me know the hate I bear that made me leave thee so? You speak not as you think, cannot be. <laughs> Lo, she is quite of this confederacy. Now I perceive that they have conjoined all three to fashion in sport and spite me. Injury is her young, most ungrateful maid. Have you conspired? Have you with these contrived to beat me in most foul derision? What? to see thee more. Therefore be out of hope, of question, of doubt. Be certain, nothing truer. Tis no jest that I do hate thee and love Helena. Oh, me! You juggler! You <coughs> canker blossom! You thief of 
Well, what have you come by night and stolen my lost heart from him? Fie, I faith. Have you no modesty, no maiden shame, no touch of bashfulness? What? Will you tear impatient answers from my gentle tongue? Fie, you counterfeit. Puppet, you puppet. Why so? Oh, hi, that way goes the game. I see she hath made compare between our statues. She hath urged her mind, and with her personage, her bright personage, her mind, forsooth, she hath prevailed with him. And are you schooled so high in his esteem, because I am so simple and so slow? How slow am I, thou painted maple? <laughs> How slow am I? I am not yet so slow, but that my nails can't dig up to my eyes! Seek a place to fight. 
tired ever of them, overcast the night. The starry welkin cover thou anon with drooping fog as black as Acheron, and lead these testy rivals so astray as come not one within another's way. Sometimes Lysander frame thy tongue, then stir Demetrius up with bitter wrong, and sometimes rail thou like Demetrius, and from each other look thou lead them thus, till over their brows death counterfeiting sleep with leaden legs and batty wings doth creep. Then crush this herb into Lysander's eye, which hath this virtuous property to take from thence all error from his might and make his eyes roll with wanted sight. Whilst I in this affair do thee employ, I'll to my queen and beg her Indian boy, and then I will her charmed eye release from monster's view, and all things shall be peace. My fairy lord, this must be done with haste, for night swift dragons cut the clouds full fast, and yonder shines Aurora's harbinger, at whose approach ghosts wandering here and there troop home to churchyards, damned spirits all, that in crossways and floods have burial, already to their wormy beds are gone. For fearless day should look their shames upon, they willfully themselves exile from light, and must for aye consort with black-browed night. But we are spirits of another sort. I with the morning's love have oft made sport, and, like a forester, the groves may tread, even till the eastern gate all fiery red, opening on Neptune with fair blessed beams, turns into yellow gold his salt green streams. But, notwithstanding, haste, make no delay. We may yet effect this business ere day. Up and down. Up and down. I will lead them up and down. I am feared in field and town. Goblin, lead them up and down. Oh, here comes one. Where art thou, proud Demetrius? Speak thou now. Here, villain, drawn and ready, where art thou? I will be with thee straight. Follow me then to plainer ground. Speak again. Thou run away, thou coward. Art thou fled? Speak in some bush. Where dost thou hide thy head? Thou coward, thou art bragging to the stars, telling the bushes that thou lookst for wars and wilt not come. Come, recreant, come, thou child. I'll whip thee with a rod if he is defiled that draws a sword on thee. Yeah, art thou there? <laughs> Follow my voice. We'll try no manhood here. Ah! He goes before me and still dares me on. Yet when I come where he calls, then he is gone. The villain is lighter heel than I. I followed fast, but faster did he fly. But fallen I am in dark, uneven way. And he will rest me. Come thou, gentle day, for but if once show me thy grey light, I'll find Demetrius and revenge this spite. Ha 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 ha! Coward, why comes thou not? Oh, abide me if thou darest, for well I won't. Now runnest before me, shifting every place, and darest not stand, nor look me in the face. Where art thou now? Come hither. I am here. Oh! Nay! Then thou mockest me. Thou shalt find this dear if ever I lie by daylight see. Now go thy way. Fate this constraineth me. Measure up my length from this cold bed. And by day's approach, Come one more, 
two of both kinds makes up four. Yeah. <laughs> Here she comes, cursed and sad. Cupid is a knavish lad, thus to make poor females mad. Oh, oh never so we oh, weary, never so in war. Dabbled by dew and torn by briars, I can no further crawl, no further go. Oh, my legs can keep no pace with my desires. Here will I rest me to the break of day, and heaven shield my sander if you mean to pray. <laughs> <laughs> On the ground, sleep sound. I'll apply to your eye, gentle lover, remedy. When thou wakest, thou takest true delight in the sight of thy former lady's eye. And the country proverb shall be shown, that every man shall take his own. In thy waking shall be shown. Jack shall have Jill, Nord shall go ill, the man shall have his mare again, and all shall be well. Sit thee down upon this flowery bed, <laughs> while I thy amiable cheeks do pour. And stick musk roses in thy smooth, smooth head, and kiss thy fair large ears, my gentle joy. on top of a thistle, and for Monsieur, have a care the honey bag break not. I would be loath to have you overflowing with the honey bags in your... <laughs> this sweet sight. Her dotage now, I do begin to pity. For meeting her of late behind the wood, seeking sweet favours of this hateful fool, I did upbraid her and fall out with her. For she, his hairy temples then had rounded with a coronet of fresh and fragrant flowers. <clears throat> and that same dew, which sometimes on the buds was wont to swell like round and orient pearls, stood now 
within the flowerets eyes, like tears which did their own disgrace bewail. When I had at my pleasure taunted her, and she in mild terms begged my patience, I did ask of her her changeling child, which straight she gave me, and fairy sent to bear her to my bow in fairy land. Now I will undo this hateful imperfection of her eyes, and, gentle Puck, take this transformed scalp from off the head of this Athenian swain, that he, awaking when the others do, may all to Athens back again repair, and think no more on this night's accidents than the fierce vexations of a dream. But first, I will release the fairy queen. Be as thou was wont to be, see as thou was wont to see. Diane's bud over Cupid's flower hath such force and blessed power. Wake you, my Titania, my sweet queen. <laughs> my own rock. <clears throat> what visions have I seen? Methought I was enamored of an ass. <laughs> There lies your love. <laughs> <laughs> How came these things to pass? <laughs> How might I to despise his visage now? Silence a while. Puff, take off this head. To time your music call and strike more dead than common sleep of all these five the scents. Music, ho, oh, music such as charmeth sleep. When thou wakest, with thine own fool's eyes peep. Sound, music, come my queen, take hands with me, and rock the ground whereon these sleepers be. Now thou and I are new in amity, and will tomorrow midnight solemnly dance in Duke Theseus' house, triumphantly, and bless it to all fair prosperity. There shall the pairs of faithful lovers be wedded with Theseus, all in jollity. Fairy king, attend and mark. I do hear the morning lark. Then my queen, in silence sad, trip we after the night's shade. We the globe can compass soon, swifter than the wandering moon. Come, my lord, and in our flight tell me how it came this night that I sleep in here with you, with these mortals. of hounds and echo in conjunction. I was with Hercules and Cadmus once, when in a wood of Crete they bade the bear with hounds of Sparta. Never did I hear such gallant tidings, for beside the grove, the skies, the fountains, every region near seemed all one mutual cry. Never did I hear so musical a discord, such sweet thunder. My hounds are bred out, Spartan kind, so feud, so sanded, that their heads are hung with ears to sweep away the morning dew, crooked knees and dew lamp like Thessalian bulls. Slow and pursuit, but matched in mouth like bells. Each under each a crime more tunable. Was never hollow to, nor cheered out with a horn. In Crete, in Sparta, nor in Thessaly. <coughs> Judge when you hear. But soft, what names are these? My love, this is Hermia here asleep. And this Lysandra. Oh, this Demetrius is. And this Helena, old Nadal's Helena. I wonder if they're being here together. No doubt they rose up early to observe the rite of May, and hearing our intent, came to grace our solemnity. But speak, my love, is not the day that Hermia give her answer of choice? It is, my dove. Go, bid the huntsmen and wake them up with their horns. Good morrow, friends. Begin these woodbirds but a couple now. Pardon, my lord. I pray you all stand up. I know you two are rival enemies. How come this gentle concord, my lord? The jealousy is so far from hatred, to sleep by hate, and fear no enmity. My lord, I shall reply amazingly. 
half sleep, half waking. But as of yet, I cannot truly say how I came here. But truly would I speak. And bethink me. So it is. I came with Hermia hither. Our intent was to be gone from Athens, where we minded about the peril of the Athenian law. What say you, Demetrius? She was to be your wife? My lord, fair Helen told me of their self, of this purpose hither to this wood, and I in fury hither followed them. Fair Helen owned fancy following me. But my good lord, I work not by what power, but by some power it is my love to Hermia melted, as the snow seems to me now, as in the remembrance of an idol god, which in my childhood I did dote upon. But all the faith, the virtue of my heart, and the object and the pleasure of mine eye, is only Helena. To her, my lord, was I betrothed, or I saw Hermia? Though like in sickness did I loathe this food. But in health, come to my natural taste. Now I do wish it, love it, long for it, and will forevermore be true to it. Fair lovers, you have fortunately met. Of this discord I'll hear more anon. Hermia, I overbear your father's will. For in the temple by and by with us, this couple shall eternally be missed. And for the morning now is something worn, our proposed hunting shall be set aside. Away with us to Athens, three and three. We'll hold a feast in great solemnity. Come, Apollo. These things seem small and undistinguishable, like far up mountains turned into clouds. <laughs> Methinks I see with parted eye, yet everything seems double. <laughs> so methinks. I have found Demetrius like a jewel, mine own, yet not mine own. <laughs> are you sure? Now we are awake. It seems to me that yet we sleep, we dream. Do not you think the Duke was here and with us for him? And Hippolyta. And he did befall us to the temple. Why then, we are awake, let us follow him. And by the way, let us recount our dreams. <laughs> Ask the widowed man to say what dream it was. The man is but an ass if you go about to expound this dream. <laughs> to conceive, nor his heart to report what my dream was. <sighs> I will get Peter Prince to write a ballad of this dream, <laughs> and it shall be called Bottom's Dream. <laughs> because it hath no bottom. <laughs> Oh. 
stop. The play is marred. It goes not forward, do it. It is not possible. We have not a man in all Athens able to discharge Pyramus but he. Aye, you have the best wit out of any handicraft man in Athens. Yeah, and the best person too. Mm. And he is a very paramour for a sweet voice. Ah, we must say paragon for bless us. Paramour's a thing of more. Masters, the Duke is coming from the temple, and there are two or three other lords and ladies yet to be married. If our sport had gone forward, we would all have been made men. Oh, bless us. Sweet Bully Bottom, that's how he lost sixpence a day during his life. He hasn't escaped sixpence a day, and the Duke's not going to give him sixpence a day for playing Pyramus. He would have bloody deserved it too. <laughs> sixpence a day in Pyramus? Well, nothing. Where are these lads? Where are these hunts? <laughs> Bottom! Oh, most courageous state! Oh, most happy hour! <laughs> Masters, I am to discourse wonders. But ask me not what, for if I tell you I am no true Athenian, I will tell you right as a fellow. Let us hear, sweet bottom. <sighs> not a word of me. All I will tell you is that the Duke hath died. Which repelled him. Get good strings to your beards, new ribbons to your pumps. We'll meet presently at the palace. Let every man look on his path. Well, for the short and the long ears, our play is preferred. In any case, let Fisby have clean linen, and let not him that play the lion his names, for they shall hang out for lions' paws, and most dear actors, eat no onion, <laughs> nor garlic, <coughs> for we are to add a sweet breath, and I do not doubt what you hear them say, it's a sweet comedy. No more words. <coughs> yeah, away. Lovers speak of. More strange than true. I never heard these antique fables nor these fairy toys. Loves and madmen have such seething brains, such shaping fantasies, that apprehends more than Corey's and ever comprehends. The lunatic, the love of the poet, our imagination all compact. One sees more devils than vast hell can hold. That is the madman. The lover, all is frantic, sees Helen's beauty in the brow of Egypt. The poet's eye in fine frenzy rolling doth glance from heaven to earth, and earth to heaven. The forms of things unknown, the poet's pen turns into shapes and gives to airy nothing. A local habitation and a name. Such tricks hath such strong imagination that if it apprehends some joy, it comprehends the bringer of that joy. And the knight, imagining some fear, how is he a bush supposed to bear? But all the story of the knights told over, and all their minds transfigured so together, small witnesses than fancies images, and grows to something of great constancy, but however so strange and admirable. Here come the lovers, full of joy and mirth. Joy, gentle friends, joy and fresh day of love accompany your hearts. More than to us, to wait in your royal walks, your board, your bed. Come now, what masks, what dance shall we have to wear away this long age of three hours which are after supper and bedtime? Where is our usual manager of her? Is there no play to ease the anguish of this torturing hour? Call Philistress. Here, my noble lord. Say, what abridgment do you have for this evening? What masks? What dances? How shall we guard this lazy time not for some delight? There's a brief how many sports are right. Make choice of which your highness would see first. Battle of the Centaurs, to be sung by an Athenian eunuch to the harp. Mm. Would have known that, but I told my love in the glory of my kings and Hercules. The riot of the tipsy Bacchanals, tearing the Thracian singer in their rage. Mm. That is an old device, and was played when right from Thebes came the last conqueror. Uh. The thrice three muses mourning the death of learning late to cease in beggary. Mm. That is some satire, mm. keen and critical. 
are fitting with a nuptial ceremony. Yeah. A tedious and brief scene of young Pyramus and his love Thisbe. Ah. A very tragical murder. Merry and tragical, tedious and brief. That is hot ice and wonder of strange snow. How will we find the concord of this discord? Yeah, uh, play there is, my noble lord, some ten words long, which is as brief as I've known a play. But by ten words, my noble lord, it's too long. For in all the play there's not one word apt, nor one player fitted, and tragical it is, my noble lord. <coughs> for Pyramus therein doth kill himself, which I must confess, when I saw the rehearsed, made mine eyes water. But more merry tears, the passion of loud laughter never shed. And what are they that do play? Hard-handed men that work in Athens here, which never laboured in their minds till now, now have toiled in their unbreathed memories with this same play against your nuptial. And I will hear it. Oh, no, please, my noble lord. It's not for you. I've heard it over, and it's nothing. Nothing in the world. Unless you can find sport in their intents. Extremely stretched and conned with cruel pain to do you service, sire. I will hear that play, but never anything can be amiss when simpleness and duty tenderest. Go, bring them in, and take your places. Ladies? I wish not to see wretchedness overcharged, and duty in his service perishing. Why, gentle sweet, you will see no such thing. And he says they can do nothing of this kind. The kind are we to give them thanks for nothing. Our sport will be to take what they mistake, and what poor duty cannot do, noble respect takes in those margin of merit. Where I have come, great clerks have proposed premeditated welcomes, where I have seen them shiver and look pale, make periods in the missed sentences, and throttle their practice accents in their fears. In conclusion, dumbly broke off, not paying me a welcome. Trust me, sweet, the science yet I've picked a welcome, and the modesty of fearful duty, I've read as much as the rattling tongue of saucy and audacious eloquence. Love, therefore, in tongue-tied simplicity, and least speak most of my capacity. <coughs> so please, your grace, the prologue is addressed. Let him approach. <laughs> with our good will, that you should think we come not to offend, but with good will, to show our simple skill that is the true beginning of our end. Consider then we come but in despite. We do not come as minding to contest you our true intent is. Oh, for your delight we are not here, that you should here repent you. The actors are at hand, and by their show, you shall know all that you are like to know. This fellow doth not stand upon points. He hath read his prologue like a wrath cult. He knows not the stuff. He is not enough to speak through. To speak more. <laughs> Perchance you wonder at this show, but wander on till truth make all things plain. This man is Pyramus, if you would know. This be Euteus, Lady Thisbe, a certain. <laughs> this man, with lime and rough cast, doth present wall. <laughs> that vile wall which did these lovers sunder, and through walls chink. Oh, ah! Poor souls, <laughs> they are contempt to whisper, at the which let no man wonder. This man, with lanthorn, dog, and bush of thorn, presenteth moonshine, for, if you will know, by moonshine did these lovers think no scorn to mean at Nina's tomb. There, there to woo. This grisly beast, which lion hearts by name, the trusty Thisbe coming first by night, did scare away, or rather did affright, and as she fled, her mantle she did fall, which lion vile with a bloody mouth did stain. Anon comes Pyramus, sweet tooth and tall, and finds this trusty Thisbe's mantle slain, whereat with blade. Bloody blameful blade, <coughs> he bravely broached his bloody boiling breast, and Thisbe, tarrying in mulberry shade, 
his dagger drew and died. For all the rest, let's lie in moonshine wall and lovers twain at large discourse, while here they do remain. I wonder if the lion beats me. I ah, know it, my lord. One lion may, and many asks too. Imagination then, and not theirs. 
we imagine no worse of them than they of themselves, they may pass for excellent men. Here come two noble beasts, a man and a lion. <laughs> you ladies, you, whose gentle hearts do fear, the smallest, monstrous mouse that creeps on floor, may now perchance both quake and tremble here, when lion, in wildest rage, doth roar. Then know that I, as one, snug the joiner, am a lion fell, or else no lion's dam. For if I should, as lion, come in strife into this place, t'were pity on my life. A very gentle beast of good conscience. The very best of a beast, my lord, that e'er I saw. This lion is a very fox for his valour. Sure, and it is for his discretion. Not so, my lord, for his discretion cannot carry his valour, and the fox carries the goose. His discretion, I am sure, cannot carry his valour, as the goose carries on the fox. It is well. Leave it to his discretion, and let us listen to the moon. This lanthorn doth the horn ring. He should have worn the horns in his head. He is no present as the horns are invisible within the circumference. This clan thorn doth the horn moon present. <coughs> Myself, the man, I the moon This do is the sing. greatest error of all the rest. The man should be put into the land thorn. <coughs> else would it be the man in the moon? He does not come for the candle, for you see it's already in snuff. Mm, I am weary of this moon. Would he would change? By a small life of discretion, it appears that he's in wane. Yet, in courtesy and in all reason, we must stay the time. Proceed, moon. All that I have to say is to tell you, the lanthorn is the moon. I, the man in the moon, this thorn bush, my thorn bush, and this dog, my dog. Why all these are in the lanthorn when all these are in the moon? <laughs> oh, sorry. Right. 
pretend that he is dead. He is nothing. With the help of a surgeon, he might yet yeah, recover and prove an ass. Our chance moonshine is gone before Libby comes back and finds her lover. She will find him by starlight. Here she comes now, and her passion ends the play. We <laughs> hope she should not use such a long one for such a pyramid. I hope she will be brief. I hope we'll turn the balance. Which pyramids which this be is the battle? He for a man God warrant us, and she for a woman God bless us. She hath spied him already with those sweet eyes. Oh, oh what that she means me tell us it. <laughs> Asleep, my love? <laughs> Sweet peace. And the owner 
of it blessed ever shall the same be rest. Trip away, make no stay, meet me all by break of day. Offended. Think but this, and all is mended, that you have but slumbered here, while these visions did appear. <laughs> and this week an idle theme, no more yielding but a dream. Gentles, do not reprehend, if you pardon we will mend. And as I am an honest puck, if we have unearned luck, now to scape the serpent's tongue we shall make amends ere long. Else the puck a liar call, and so good night unto you all. If we be friends, give me your hands, and Robin shall restore amends.